Sound good? Yes. Great. All right. Well, welcome everyone. And uh, it's a very small, intimate group, uh, but I'm very excited for this weekend. And I'm excited because this is a very special retreat in that we're concentrating on metta, which is loving kindness. And um, I've now just started really this year um, to do more of these advanced retreats. So when I do the basic retreat, I talk about the three principles, you know, meditation technique, and then the wisdom, which is the insight, which I've done a few times here. And then the open heartedness and uh, love. And all of those three things are important in a strong uh, practice, spiritual practice, whatever you like. And to progress in meditation, all of these are strong. And the interesting thing is that whichever path you decide to go down, even if you go into just say doing samadhi, you naturally will open up to wisdom and metta or loving kindness as well and if you decide to go down a loving kindness route there'll also be that you'll naturally find you know your tendency to go into samadhi and wisdom will come out of that as well so within each path there's the whole of the path but i find practically uh, most people uh, will practice one for a time and then they may find that they're not getting as far as they would like in one particular path. And so um, they might practice another path. So they do insight meditation for some time and then they might swap back to doing um, Samadhi meditation. Um, but I've decided to start doing three different retreats to suit the various characters of people. So if you really feel like you're drawn to the Metta, then you can do this retreat, and if you were drawn to insight, you can do that retreat, etc. Samadhi. So when the Buddha talked, he talked about you know the two wings of the bird: the insight, understanding how the mind works, and then the metta, opening ourselves up to you know good qualities, um, and through developing good qualities of mind, such as kindness, generosity, patience, forgiveness, love, all of those good qualities, we actually purify our mind. We purify our mind. And with that purification of mind, we perceive the world in a different light. And we actually perceive the world as full of kindness and full of love and it's much easier to forgive and it's much easier to understand when you see suffering and when you see um, you know people uh, that are you know doing harm to others uh, you know whilst we need to take action there is a sense of understanding that there are many various causes and conditions that make that happen and so we approach those situations with more equanimity and it doesn't tend to cause us to fall into our own hatred and anger and you know desire or, or whatever so this is the introduction of meta um, as I said sometimes translated as a kindness other ones are many times translated as love for other beings uh, but I know in the West, love is a little bit of a loaded word. Some people love the word love, and other people sort of really don't like this word love, and different people have different, you know, meanings, understandings of, of what love means. Um, so I think essentially, in my mind, love differs from metta in a couple of different ways. The first one with metta and you'll see as we're practicing over this weekend, we start off with people that are close to us, but gradually over the week weekend, what we want to do is expand out that sense of love to eventually all beings. 
to even strangers that we don't know? How can we gain a sense of love towards, uh, you know, strangers, even nature, even the earth itself? Uh, so, Metta has this idea of boundlessness, which for most people when they talk about love, that's not really there. They're talking about, oh yes, I love this individual person, and I love this person, this one, but not those people. So, this idea of boundlessness um, is very important to this idea of Metta, and we will be practicing trying to sort of expand that sense of um, you know, lo loving kindness out towards all beings. Um, so it's a fairly lofty ideal uh, to think about that, um, but it's certainly capable uh, for all of us to gradually expand that feeling of love so it encompasses everybody. And we'll do that through visualization, we'll do it through um, you know, uh, sort of words and phrases that we will do. And probably most important of all, we'll do it through trying to have a felt sense into the body. Um, and eventually, if you practice metta long enough, or maybe you've experienced this yourself anyway, is you will get a kinesthetic sense of energy flowing and people actually will say they can feel themselves radiating love to or radiating matter to other people and you know th this is something that perhaps we're going to aim towards and perhaps experience on this retreat i hope so you know it's my um, biggest wish that uh, you all get to experience that um, sense of Meta as more of an energy flowing out, as if you're part of something more than just our small little <coughs> self, you know, um, and that we can be a conduit um, almost for energy to, to flow through us. So, um, one of the things that we will be doing, of course, as we do all meditation practice we have these lofty ideas of being one with consciousness and one with samadhi and one with metta and we have this ideal of ourselves of uh, pristine quality sending out undiluted metta to everybody and we sit down and within a few minutes i'm sure you can um you know sympathize and um, be empathetic to this the, the, the distractions start coming up and the, you know, thoughts come up and they're not always positive. You know, we have angry thoughts and jealous thoughts and tired thoughts and anxious thoughts. And, and this come, comes up time and time again. So this, this is a theme of all meditation practice and of course it will be a theme this weekend. Um, so one thing I kind of want to say about that is that um, I guess in the Buddhist teachings, there's sort of two ideas that are useful to kind of set the scene and set the foundation that's helpful in this retreat. These are Buddhist ideas, um, but nevertheless, I think they can be applicable, you know, across the spectrum. And this is this idea that just by our very nature, we have within us what the Buddhists call Buddha nature. So a natural tendency or a natural ability to access wisdom, to access love, to access energy, and to, you know, we have the potential to be uh, fully realized and let go of all of our negativities. This is what the Buddhists call Buddha nature. Um, and so, at our heart of hearts, our consciousness is sort of fully pure. So when we come into this world, we come into this world with a consciousness that is, you know, unsullied by any sort of negative emotion. We, we, we don't get born angry, we don't get born with hatred, we don't get born with anxiety or depression. 
all of these things are learned. And also within us, uh, you know, we often talk about the inner guru. If you look deep within yourselves, you will find the answers that you're looking for. It is within us. Um, so we rely on this to a certain extent um, and we try to connect in with this more and more. And this is naturally um, kind to all beings because at its root, it understands the interdependence of all beings. And I've talked about that on the, on the basic retreat. So uh, we are connecting with that. However, secondly, there's also this idea that there's almost like a fountain or a wellspring of negative thought patterns that come up. Now again, in the Hindu and Buddhist traditions, they believe in past lives. So they will say that some of these negativities that are coming up are coming up from uh, previous lives. And so it's like this, yeah, a tree sprouting these seeds or well, like a fountain, you know, giving off these seeds of, um, you know, the three, three main kalasas are, um, you know, aversion or hatred, you know, difficulty, uh, greed, and then the third one is confusion or ignorance, not understanding. And then all the other emotions are really derivatives of those three main um, fountains of negativity that are coming up. And so the reason I say this is because one of the other things that I'll be coming back to again and again during this retreat is this uh, idea of uh, a sort of a selflessness, in one respect, a selflessness uh, of ourselves, that we are not necessarily confined to this self. And you could see this as saying, you know, we don't truly exist as we think we exist. Another way to look at it is we're so much more than what we think we are. So you can look at that as if we're part of the divine nature of the universe, you know, and all traditions, you know, talk of this in some way, that there is this sort of connection to God or this connection to the divine. And understanding that our essence is this sort of Buddha nature that is sort of bigger than us in a way, and we're trying to connect to that. And then on the one hand, and then also to understand that this kind of, these, these seeds that are coming up uh, and causing us to have potentially uh, negative thoughts or at least distracted thoughts at the very least, um, you know, it's, it, it's not, we have to think about a little bit as it's not really our fault. These are just coming up anyway. Uh, they're patterns that are ingrained in us throughout, you know, since we were born, and, and as many traditions would say, even before that. Um, and I think why that helps is it gives you this sense, you know, to not take things personally. And so when you're meditating, if you're trying to meditate on metta and you're finding it very difficult and other things that are coming up, if you start blaming yourself, if you start going, oh, why is my mind, why is my mind doing this, you silly mind? It actually doubles, it makes it doubly worse because there's the negativity coming up and then on top of that, you're chastising yourself for the negativity coming up in the first place. Whereas if you see it, that these things are arising all the time and if you feed it, it will grow. But if you just leave it alone, It'll, it'll, die, it'll sort of dissolve, it'll die down a lot quicker than if you um, worry too much about it. So, yeah, so we have to, um, as we're meditating, we have to try to connect in with that natural Buddha nature and just trust. There's a level of trust in meditation that I think goes a long way. That if you trust that there is something more, you will connect in with that something more. But uh, as well, once uh, negativities come up, try not to personalise and try not to see them uh, too much as 
your problems. Instead, look at them as just a natural, um, maybe you could actually look at it as a natural uh, purification process, that these things have to come up and just let them come and let them go and then come back to the meditation, um, uh, meditation object. So, um, yeah, with that in mind, uh, I'm really looking forward to this retreat and I think you'll find that practicing you know, metta in this way can lead to a huge amount of sort of nourishment for the soul. My aim is with our small group, you know, is to uh, have the mind as much as possible, um, you know, stay in this um, warm energy of love and it'll be helped by the group, you know, always when you do things as a group, it's a, a much stronger. And if we can have a little bubble of warm energy within ourselves and keep that for the whole weekend, you'll find it's enormously nourishing, uh, you know, a sense of energization um, and, and, you know, meaningfulness, which, as, a, as, as you know, will help you propel you when you go back into the busy life to sort of keep that um, attitude going forward and keep up your meditation practice. And then um, if you can, that will have uh, you know, a radiating effect on those people around you. So eventually, you know, you will have definitely an effect on people who see you and feel that energy of that calmness and kindness radiating out of you. Uh, you know, if not just naturally, just by the actions that you do that will have an effect on those people. So I'm looking forward to creating that, that beautiful bubble of energy among us in this amazing retreat and I hope you are too. And uh, yeah, that's just really what I wanted to say as an introduction and then um, I thought I'd just open it up to maybe any questions that you have. So I'll just leave it there, I'll pause it there.